Hey, welcome to the Drummond Stone Podcast, the podcast where two friends raise a glass and, oh yeah, have a conversation. I'm Nick. I'm Kyle. Kyle. Yes, sir. Can you move that a little bit closer to your face? Yeah. There you go. Turn it up a little bit. Mm, there it is. Oh, there That's we go. Be- That's better. That's better. Yeah. Hey, welcome. Kyle. Hey. I had a weird experience. Yeah? Uh, yeah, and I, I want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Making me nervous. Well, I mean, it's not super. Okay, here's here's what happened. I was in the bathroom. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. So I, I went and I purchased uh, something for an upcoming episode. Okay. Um, and I, I used cash, and I handed the lady a ten dollar bill. Yeah. And and what I bought um was like I don't know like two something, and it, it came you know I, I got change. Sure. Right? And she hands me this coin that looks like a quarter, but it's painted red, and like someone's like filed the sides down. And on the back side, and she's like, oh, it, that's weird. Like, somebody's painted a quarter. I'm like, yeah, that is weird. So I flip it over. On the back side, there was like an etching of a panda. Okay. That was only like half of the weird part. So like, obviously, you know, weird to have the panda, right? Yeah. Weird panda. Right. So then um, I, I turn the quarter to her and the you know lady behind the counter. I say, yeah, there's a panda on the back. She's like, what? I was like, somebody's like etched a panda onto this quarter. Like, like it looks like hand done. Oh yeah, like somebody did it like with a Dremel tool or something. And I was like, yeah, this is actually an illegal quarter. And she's like, what? <laughs> like, well, you can't deface money. So like, you know, somehow you guys got this quarter right. you know, from whatever. Um, can I get a different one? Right. And like, her mind was blown. Like, I'm sure no one has ever asked her for a different coin before. Sure. But like the look on of just <laughs> terror on this woman's face. I was like, you know, that I don't want this weird quarter. Like, can I get a different one? Right. And like, I, I even felt weird asking that question. Like, can I get a different quarter, please? Right. Like, and uh, she was like, I don't know the protocol for this. I'm like, <laughs> come on. Well, you put this one back in your money drawer <laughs> well, and you pull out another one and you hand it to me. So then I had a decision to make. Like, do I go like sarcastic or like, you know, mm. really play into the thing or do right. I like, right. oh yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of weird. And I was like, um, I don't, I don't know either. <laughs> and she's like, I guess I'll just open the money drawer and give you a different one. I'm like, okay. I like that. Yeah. That's, that's the, you're, uh, you're the MVP today, ma'am. <laughs> correct. And then you picture Ted Lasso. MVP. MVP. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was a, that was a weird thing that happened to me today. Be a goldfish, man. <laughs> just forget this, forget ever this ever happened you ever had that happen i mean i've, I've gotten like you know canadian coins and sure. stuff like that before because i mean you you handle money fairly often i've seen you know i remember like the the craze of like the what was it they used to stamp it on dollar bills find my oh like find george find, or something like find george or something like that yeah i, I saw some of them like they were like actually embossed or like uh that like pressure thing like oh, really? you, yeah yeah hmm. like what you would do like um um people who read in braille they put it oh, on sure. their, it's, it was kind of like that but it was like the fine you know fine yeah. george or whatever yeah i mean i've seen that kind of stuff but nothing ever where it was that defaced yeah like, and, like you could, just you could tell it was a quarter was, like, totally like i don't know what to do with that yeah the the half the side that is you know so american quarters one side's george washington's head the other side's an eagle normally or something or like, like the new ones all have like the state states or, or yeah whatever. whatever so this one um the george washington side you could clearly tell like that it was a quarter at one point that was the red yeah well the the whole thing was red oh and then like <laughs> It had been like worn, like somebody scratched some of the red away. It was, it was bizarre, man. man you could have really taught that lady like a lot, I think, <laughs> just in general. <laughs> like, what do you but mean? specifically about, hey, if somebody hands you that, don't take it. Well, I tell I, them I, that I you can't that. accept. I it. did say that. I was like, this is an illegal quarter. Like it's illegal to deface money in this. I mean, it's illegal to deface money. Right. Know, that's hard stop. But like especially this. But then I think you could have just said like pick. A topic, um, <laughs> pick a subject. We'll we'll deep dive, and I'm going to teach you a lot about whatever that is. Well, I also did hand I her. Promise. I handed I handed her a card and said, "Have you heard about Drummond Stone?" <laughs> and at that point, like she she wasn't having anything, so you know we did not gain a listener. She, she's today. still stuck on that. It's an illegal court. <laughs> Am I gonna get? I, I legit thought she was gonna call her manager. Like, and I would have been happy to. She's, to... she's probably like literally thinking like, "Fuck, <laughs> my 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 cash drawer is gonna be off today." 
I'm going to be here for so long trying to figure out what to do with this. How am I going to redeem this quarter? Oh, my God. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's that's already where she was at. Oh, man, poor lady. Now I feel terrible. I got to go find a quarter somewhere. (laughs) Make this right. Can I go to the car real quick? (laughs) Anyway. Anyway. uh, On that note, you want to drink something? Indeed, I do. What do you want to drink? Uh, how about whiskey? I support this. How about scotch? I definitely support this. How about Ardbeg? Uh, no, I definitely support that too. <laughs> <laughs> how about Ardbeg Oogadol? Oogadol. Can can I spell that real quick for everybody? Indeed, if you've you can. never seen this, yeah, uh, go ahead. Oh wait, no, no, I want to see. Oh, it. you want to look at it? And spell <laughs> yeah, it. I got gotcha. okay. you. Uh, Oogadol is spelled U I G E A D A I L. Oogadol. That's how I would say it. Is it really? You, Gia <laughs> There it is. Oh, Can, Google Dial. Uh, real quick. Google like, This is something I love about scotches. Yeah. Especially like your your older names and scotches. Mm-hmm. That they just, they're not afraid to, to pull out the... Uh, <laughs> The, Careful. Well, the uh the scottish like the hardcore scottish names right um i mean half of the scotches you can barely pronounce the names of. yeah yeah <laughs> no i totally agree it, it, it's fun when they lean into it oh yeah i think so too you know also when people go like look for it or people like yeah I, have you had the um yeah and like i've done that too and i think we all have of like uh can i have the art bag corv corv recon correct or the what uh the Craig Alecky, and then you're looking at like Craig Hardstop. I don't know how to pronounce yeah, the rest of that. that. Craig one? Craig, yeah. Craig, 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 Y'all got Craig's whiskey? Craig Olachi? <laughs> Is it Native American? <laughs> no, no, it ain't. No, no, it's it's not. Anyway, so the Oogdal. 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 Yeah. What do we know about it? Uh, all right. Ardbeg Oogdal. Uh huh. The ultimate eye listing of malt scratch whiskey. Ooh. Uh, this is, um, this is going to be coming in at 54.2%. 54.2. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Like, it just, it, it kind of, it hit me. Ooh, it's Did more it? than 100. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I'm, I'm, I'm already excited. Let's see. Want some bottle words? Uh, Yeah. Isle of Isla. There it is. That's um, it? It's on the uh, eastern coast of Isla. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like south Southeastern. Yeah. Yeah. Ardbeg Ugadol takes its name from the Broding mysterious lock which provides the peat laden water for mm. ardbeg uh this is a special vatting of different styles of ardbeg marrying together traditional deep smoky notes with the luscious sweet rainy tones oh. of old x sherry casks so it's a no age statement then not seen one yeah i think this is one of their actually their only kind of like core line that is a no age statement i think is it Corey Reckon? No, I don't think Corey Reckon is either. Oh, yeah. Now that I'm looking at that bottle, yeah, you're, I guess you're right. Yeah, and I don't know hey, if... forget everything I just said. Anoa is either. Maybe I'm just totally wrong about all I think all it might this. just be the 10. <laughs> the 10. Interesting. I mean, I think they have, or at least they put out maybe special releases yeah. of like a 18, huh. possibly. I don't sure. know. Well, like, I'm thinking like the hardcore, like none of that. No, I guess I yeah. guess not. Scorch, Ardbeg. Yeah. I don't think any of those, any of those are. are no... I think they're just all like independent. Yeah. Huh special releases okay well now that i think about it i guess our big doesn't really like their age statements which yeah. is fine yeah, yeah. yeah must be their thing all right so the Ugadol lock lock is uh just outside of the Ardbeg distillery as a whole like i we i looked it up on the map okay and from what i understand like it is one of if not the deepest locks on isla oh wow yeah so one of the deepest lakes and it like that whole area if you look at the uh isle of isla um, pretty much everything is right there along the coast of like basically the entire island. Right. But like a lot of the inland is just boggy marsh, which is where a lot of these uh, distilleries are getting all of their peat. Right. Shall we? Oh, please. Nice. Hey, do me a favor. Will you pour that in a glass for me? Yeah. Ooh. Well, looky there. Whiskey in the air. Whiskey in the air. Yeah, I've heard that song before. I like the color of this. Yeah, I would, you know, I would say golden honey. Yeah, it's not, it's not like a dark honey by any no, means. No, no, just a much kind of like more like spring honey. Yeah, golden yellow, urine. <laughs> well, if your urine's <laughs> this color, you might need to lay off the whiskey for a bit and drink you some H two O. Like that's healthy. Nah, <laughs> no sir, that's not healthy. I watch the dogs pee all the time. They don't drink whiskey. It's pretty yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ah. on the nose. That is fantastic. Yeah, I mean it's it's everything that you remember Ardbeg being. Yep. But oh, yeah, yeah, just a, a a variation. Yeah. You know, it's got a much sweeter, honey sweet, mm-hmm. but like 
with some sort of like mystery jam that's on it <laughs> mystery jam yeah. isn't that the uh the scooby-doo van name the mystery jam <laughs> yeah probably yeah okay you're 100 right like it's campfire it's it's barbecue it's uh smoke pit if you will barbecue sauce is like a good barbecue sauce it's like, is it's good. like it's like yeah yeah honey but, and barbecue but sauce. it's like a you ever had like a raspberry barbecue sauce or something like yeah. you know fruit that's what it reminds me of yeah yeah like like a peach barbecue sauce there's also this like cobbler note yeah yeah like you know it's got that the crumbly bits yeah on top like you, you take the um not necessarily brown sugar but like that that sugar in the raw kind of sugar Right. Demerara sugar, I think it's called, mm-hmm. and and you like toast that over the top of it. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like more, it is kind of like rye ish, yeah. but like I, I I just I just know it's blueberry. So it's blueberry oh. cobbler, smoky blueberry cobbler, drizzle of honey. Yep, that's been a little, little smoke, but also it's not that at all. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like you know, you, you but it's kinda, also just our big whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's really interesting. It's like, the it sherry. That's what's like conjuring absolutely. all this like absolutely fruitiness. Totally forgot that for a second. Oh, yeah. No, shit. Yeah, this it's is- the sherry. That right there is what makes me want to know how long are they aging this? Because, I mean, every time we get a sherried scotch or even a port, you know, port finish or anything like that, I'm like, how long are you legitimately aging it on those staves or in those other barrels? Like, I want to know that. Sure. How long does it take to impart that flavor? You, you kind of take it away from your nose and just do a quick reset and bring it back in. And like, it's just, you get that like campfire smokiness all over again. And it just kind of like resets that. And the blueberry crumble kind of aspect just goes away. And then you come back right back to honey, smoked honey. Right. But it's not like overwhelmed by peat, which I think, no. you know, the Ardbeg 10 and certainly the Corey Reckon are more peat forward. Yeah. This is more of a peat accent. Correct. On the nose. Anyway. Yeah. It's like a little peat, like, there you go. Right. I mean, you definitely know it's there because Pete can be, it's just so prominent, but it's not the prominent note here by any means. And I, I will say, anyway. I'm not getting really any sort of proof. Oh, yeah, not fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like twinging my nose in any way. No. Which like, I, I can throw I like. my nose all the way down. Oh, yeah. There. Which is, you know, it's interesting. If you go with, you know, a 108 proof bourbon, like that's like a, yeah. whew, it'll go right to the bottom of your eyeball. <laughs> for sure. Real quick. But this is, it's just still, the nose is so friendly. Yeah. Oh, show. You know why we're doing this? Why is that? Uh, this was requested of us too. Oh, was it? Yeah, for us to to try this and redo uh, to review it. I mean, we've had this bottle for a little while, or you've had this bottle for a little while, um, but someone requested this. There you go. Yeah, good call on their part. I appreciate it. Agreed. Is that enough? What sniffing? Yeah. You know what? What time for sipping? Oh, woo! Yeah, there's the peat. Wow. Mm. Mm. Wow. I, this is like weird, but like. It reminds me of like when you first, <laughs> I've never thought of this before, but you first like put your toothbrush with toothpaste in your mouth and like, it just like, Oh, it's like jolt of like, yeah. Like, whoa, whoa. you feel it in the back of your jaw, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. mint and other stuff. Like it, it's obviously it's, it's Pete, but like, whoa, right. That is very Pete forward, which is so interesting because it's not that way on the, on the nose. Yeah, for sure. Man. Ooh, and the bitter here? Holy crap. I know. So many things going on. That layers upon layers wow. of things. That bitter is um substantial is the I think the right word. Ooh, a little bit of a scotch hug. A wee scotch hug. Mm. Right around your scotch eggs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right around your haggis. Yeah. I mean, this is just friggin' delightful. It really is. It's such a fun journey. Tip to back. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. That, that honey sweetness jumps off the bat. Then there's like a fruity element that comes in midway. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. First, you get hit with Pete. Like uh, that is to first me, sip. Yeah. Yeah. Like that sure. is like you get like sucker punch with Pete. Yeah. First and, sip. And I say sucker punch because on the nose, you don't, I mean, you know it's there, but it's not oh, like yeah, for sure. So you get sucker punch with Pete. Then you got the honey sweetness. Okay. Right. You may continue. But <laughs> after that, the Pete for me, at the front dissipates after about the second sip, yeah. but it still hangs in there on the aftertaste and on the back of the palate yep. in that bitter note because it stays with you on your palate after you've already swallowed it. Like, Oh yeah. It's all still there. The finish is like delightful. The finish is forever long. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you're still tasting this like three days from now. Like that's how substantial this finish is. But like midway through the, the palate, the oaky nature 
starts cutting through, mm-hmm. and it just like escalates all the way to the back of the palate, yep. and just holds right there with the peat for that forever finish. That oaky note is also accentuated by a a wine grapey sweetness, right? And it is. And I'm gonna say it's the sherry that's that's poking through, but there's also this like really rich spiciness too, like like Szechuan pepper, like just like heaps of black pepper spiciness. Yeah. And with the proof that create kind of a, a pretty nice little <gasps> Oh yeah. Kind of bite. Yeah. It it almost reminds me of um the num the num tongue that you get with a uh, rye sometimes. Strong rye. Right? That is fantastic. Mm. I do I'm struggling ever so slightly. With what? This is fantastic. Yeah. But we got a Corey. Which is fantastic or Corey Reckon. Is it is it the Corey Reckon or the Ugadol? Um the, the the time that I've done it together, uh-huh. it's um it's an interesting pairing. They they're <laughs> they're quite different. And th- and I think there was one that was the the winner, but it is definitely one of those instances of what mood am I in? Mm. What am I feeling today? Mm-hmm. Am I am I feeling more of a florally delightfulness? Sure. Or am I feeling kind of more of a rugged saltiness? Oh yeah. And they do that's, they that's do balance point. each other really well. That's a good point. We'll do it. Okay. We'll save it. Towards the end? Yeah. You know, pair it? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. <gasps> All right, yeah. man, I'm impressed. It's pretty great. I mean, I feel like most channels or, or, or reviews or things that I've seen where they cover Ardbeg, yeah. Ugadol is usually the one that's like up at the top. That's yeah. usually most everybody's favorite. I can 100% see that. And yeah, and you can totally understand why. Yeah, well, and I will say, at least in my experience, the Ugadol is one of the easier ones to find, too. I've seen the Anoa. Anoa? I feel like I see pretty regularly that one more often. I do. But I see the Ugadal way more than I see the Koi Reckon. I've only seen the Koi Reckon like Fair maybe enough. once or twice. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, you can find Howard Bag 10 just about everywhere. Right. But the the Ugadal, I would say, like is second that I've seen. Yeah. Hey, got a question for you. What's that? Um, now that we have a great scotch, mm-hmm. what do you want to talk about this week? Perhaps we should take a moment uh-huh. to get to get caught up on one of our favorite topics. What's that? Star Wars. Oh, yeah. That is at the top of my list, for we, sure. We have not discussed. Oh, let me push up my glasses a second. Okay, there we go. Give a little... <laughs> yep. Mm. <laughs> I forgot my pocket protector because I don't have a pocket. <laughs> you have a... No, you don't have a pocket either. Negative. Yep. <laughs> um, We've both watched the, the phenomenon that was <sighs> Andor. Yeah, we have. And we haven't we haven't discussed it. We haven't talked about it. Since we haven't it? talked Star Wars and since post Boba, Boba Fett. Fett. Or no, so, I guess it was Obi Wan. Uh, yeah, they it both was kind Obi-Wan. of were right yeah. there together. Yeah, yeah. I think we uh, that might have been the same episode because we were like, eh, they're, they're close together. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're talking about. Andor. Let's talk Andor. Let's talk Andor. You know, before we talk Andor, though, so you know it comes out in March. What's that? Mandalorian season three. Mando season three. Yeah. At least yeah. I think it's March. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. So uh, right I'm, around the corner. I'm already like excited i'm like jonesing for that yeah like oh my god looking forward to it for sure yeah really interested to see if they just like loop in those couple of episodes from <laughs> boba fett i, I think yeah and just like put them at the front and be like hey here's a little like in case you missed it yeah because they're pretty critical <laughs> they really truly are and i think it's one of those like how i mean we talked about this in the boba fett episode like this is really just mando season 2.5 well, like you, for at you least like three episodes, watch Mando season two and go straight into Mando season three without, without that, having watched yeah. those episodes. Which I mean, let's be honest; they know, you know the nerds that we are. We're going to watch it all anyway. A thousand percent, they do. But at the same time, you think they would want to have some sort of continuity oh, yeah. to yeah. those things? Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I guess you could just say so. A few years later, <laughs> the reason why I bring up Mando. Is because for me, as of right now, the Mandalorian is the epitome of. I might even go so far as to say the the epitome of what Star Wars has become, and I've, I we've both raved over the Mandalorian. Yep. But in seeing Andor and being so jacked and so excited for Andor and like building it up in my mind, mm-hmm. and then watching the whole thing, like it surpassed all of my expectations right it was for i mean we got what is it 12 episodes 12 episodes right it is everything that i want star wars to be agreed and i think it's it's something to me that it's like you know in comparing the two looking at mandalorian and andor like the mandalorian still is kind of on that 
side where it's, it, it still relates a little more closely, I think, to the movies in, in terms of like the lore of Star Wars, where Andor specifically leans way kind of more into a legit drama. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and like spy thriller. Yes. That you still understand that you're in the Star Wars galaxy, mm-hmm. that you're in that setting, but like it doesn't have any of the just those it, it takes itself so much serious more serious yeah than those other ones where it can get a little quippy and funny like there's not a lot of laughing moments no. in andor no. you know? there's not a lot of light there's no levi- there's there's very little levity right it's yeah. all pretty at ground level hardcore yeah. stuff yeah well and i think like that's a good point because with the mandalorian you do have the levity you do have it's it's more star wars than and or for sure. Um, and it's because you're you're playing with a story that's a little closer aligned to like the story that we know. Right. But it also what's cool about Mandalorian is that it it deviates in that I'm giving you a story adjacent to this kind of main narrative. And it's also a Western. So like even, you know, season two is a little bit less Western, but it still is. Right. But it's it's it deviates from that like space opera thing. Right. And what is super successful to me about Andor is it deviates even further. And that was also what was successful about Rogue One. I mean, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a, a Star Wars fan that was like, nope, Rogue One, not for me. I don't know. They're out there. Oh, that, for sure. I mean, you know, everyone, there. If, if there's a yum to be yucked, someone's yucking that yum. Right. <laughs> but Deep. Yeah, I want they, that tattooed on my butt crack. <laughs> Well, it'll go right I want a tattoo my... of that. <laughs> no, no, I'm leaving that in. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it'll, I, we'll, we can get matching tattoos. It'll go right below my uh, Bunahaven tattoo. Like, where there's a yum. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's someone to yuck that yum. <laughs> well, now you made it awkward. I like it. Okay. Well, uh, listen, after we record this episode, we'll uh, we'll go down to Chuck's tattoo parlor down that way, and we'll, we'll get it. I'm going to need a little bit more of this whiskey. <laughs> Your wife's going to be Before pissed. <laughs> She ain't never gonna see it. <laughs> <laughs> she don't hang out back there. <laughs> She's never gonna let that happen. <laughs> Just you, me, and Chuck. <laughs> oh man. Well, <laughs> where do we go from here? On that note, um, Sarlacc fit. Yeah, but you know, most people. Even in the midst of the just upsetting things that were going on with the the new trilogy, mm-hmm. what what do we call it? The sequel trilogy i think Uh, think it i think i think that's what it's been yeah called i mean even even in the midst of that you have the the kind of disappointing thing that is han solo and yet you have rogue one that is so central Mm story-wise but is also so removed from you know kind of that general storyline right you know what i mean i mean ultimately it is the best rogue one anyway is the best part of Star Wars, what we all like. We we like you know watching crap blow up. We like people shooting things. There's a little. Is there are there lightsabers in Rogue One at all? No. I mean, if there are, the closest you get is Donnie Yen. Oh yeah, with his who, uh, who's with, well, he's got a staff, right? But like he's clearly like a believer in the Force, right? And you know, there's there's some debate with was he a Force what, what user, he? right? Or was he just that like you know. Could you could you reach out with that much um, loyalty right. or passion if you weren't and, and if you weren't a, a you know a huge midichlorian counter right. person? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> could you could you reach out and tap into it? I just want to let you know that like like, that's what he did. There's like ten thousand listeners that just turned off the podcast. Hey man, it's part of it. You just gotta <laughs> yeah, accept, well, you just gotta accept yeah, that. No, you're right. Yeah. And I, I, you know, sure, it's there. Yeah, but in terms of like Rogue One. You know, you have that the the spy thriller come to fruition. When you have a, a movie that's so dramatically different, I feel like it could go one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Like it, it could, like, oh man, like this is so different that we just don't like it. But right. I feel like because of the exhausted or the exhausting um, uh, main narrative that we were, you know, being thrust into, like that was a, a beautiful departure. And Andor is likewise. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it definitely follows in that um, kind of this new tradition of like, here, here's the thing that you like, 
It's, right. it's in that setting, yep. but let's give you a different flavor of it. It's it's kind of like Ardbeg Oogadol. Mm. You like Ardbeg? Mm-hmm. Cool. Here's one that's a little higher proof. Ooh. It's got some different things happening to it. We've, right. we've married some barrels together, thrown some sherry influence on it. You try, try that. Yeah. It's very much a similar thing. Of like, yeah. hey, you, you already like this thing. Here's like a little bit more an intelligent, more mature uh, version of that thing. Yeah. Uh, that that right there is so perfect in terms yeah. of like intelligent, more mature, because to me, a lot of the success of Andor is the dialogue in Andor. Sure, it, it's the the narrative that is not. I mean, it is told visually, but the narrative is you have to pay attention to what's being said, right, in order to really truly grasp what's happening. I always find myself, and I don't know if if you're this way, but like the names in Star Wars, they always get so muddy to me, mm-hmm. like. Who is this person? Who is this person? Who is this person? Right. But when you, within Andor, when you start to deal with that, here's what's happening, here's what's at stake, here's what's going on, here's why we care, and through Skarsgård's character and through Diego Luna's character who is Andor, like you have to pay attention to the dialogue that's being said in order to truly understand the whole narrative. And I really appreciate that. Right. Because yeah. a lot of Star Wars is not that. Well, and I, and I think what this series did way better than, you know, a lot of times what we get with Star Wars is, like, these characters were all super interesting. Yeah. And they found great actors to portray those characters. Like, Cassian is super interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, Skarsgård's character is super depth and layered to where, like, <laughs> you not really know where that dude lands. No. Like, he, he's, he's one way this episode. He, he gives you a different thing over here. Super interesting. Skarsgård, super interesting. I thought Mon Mothma. Mon Mothma, yeah. Like, it's super cool also just knowing, like, the the character's journey yeah. of, like, how they, they shot a bunch of stuff of her in Rogue One yep. that they didn't get to use. I think it was in Rogue One. I maybe so. maybe it's actually in the, one of the prequels. I don't know. Had a bunch of stuff that they shot with her and ended up having to cut it and didn't yeah. get to use it and, like, were able to finally use the same actress yeah. for this like crazy cool and like really expand her storyline too like yeah she is such an integral part to this yeah for sure it's like almost to this point it's like you could do a spinoff series focusing solely on her absolutely and how she ends up getting to become the leader of the rebellion yeah which i'm sure they're gonna cover andy circus <sighs> his character was super so good cool yeah and like understanding his thing and then like yep. the, the 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 easter egg at the end of understanding that that what they were building was the Freaking pieces for the Death Star. Yeah. Like, nuts. Yeah. And, and what I love about Andy Serkis' character, too, and, and this is a, a what I think it's, is it over two episodes? I feel like it's two episodes uh, that they're in this prison, prison. thing. Yeah. Because what, what happens is um, Andor, he's on the run. He kills a couple guys in the first episode. And then basically he spends the rest of the series on the run because of this. Right. And um, he eventually gets something happens when he's on like this resort kind of or at this resort planet thing and he's trying to hide out and he is picked up for doing something so innocuous like mm-hmm. you know just i don't know something against the empire right and he, he's taking this prison and in this prison is where he meets a bunch of people but andy circus's character and andy circus's character is the the leader of a squad of, of prisoners or like right. a, a cell block or something right and what i love about that is you know, we all know Andy Serkis from Lord of the Rings, Black Panther, Black Panther from Planet of the Planet Apes of the movies, Apes. you know, like all these motion capture kind of things. Right. He's kind of known as like the motion capture actor. actor. Yeah. But to then see Andy Serkis as Andy Serkis, which we've seen before. I mean, it's not like he's acted or he, ha- he hasn't acted outside of uh, motion capture, but to see Andy Serkis actually act like the dude is good. Like yeah. he's a great actor. Yeah. And especially to see this character and to see this character at the end of like, all right, we're busting out of this prison. He's like, I can't swim. Right. And then Diego like, Luna's like, it. <laughs> like, I let that stop you. Peace. Oh, <laughs> sorry, man. I'm out. Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm sure we're going to get more of Andy Serkis's character. At least I hope we get more of that character in the second season. Right. Um, but yeah, like what you mentioned, it, the what's it called? The end credits for the final episode, we learn that they're building the, is it a radio? No, it's the, um, like the dish, the dish that ultimately becomes like the beam for the death star. Right. And that's what they're building. Yep. 
So cool. Which clearly is going to tie in somehow because I keep saying Diego Luna, uh, Cassie and Andor has to get the plans for the Death Star. Right. So like something's going to tie in somehow. Right. And we're going to see all those characters again. I, I guarantee it. I'd be shocked if we didn't. Yeah. There, there, there'd be some some sort of a payoff, you got to think. To me, a lot of the brilliance of Andor is being able to interweave so many stories together. Mm-hmm. And it, it doesn't, it never really felt like, oh, now we've got to spend time with this person. Right. Which I don't know if you've watched any Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's kind of how Game of Thrones feels. It's like, okay, now we're going to see what happens over here, and then we're going to see what happens over here, and then over here. Not in the way that, like, oh, man, we have to spend time with this. It's like, okay, now we get to see more of this story. Right. But now we get to see more of this story. I really, really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really liked it. The only one that I would say was, like, I was less intrigued by was the one by, he was with the Empire, mm. Cyril Karn. Cyril Karn, yeah, is the character's name, but he was the one that like he gets assigned to. Oh, the security detail guy. Yeah, the security yeah, yeah. detail, and then he's the one that like is is kind of in charge when they fail at loot at, at capturing Cassian. Originally, mm-hmm. he escapes, he gets demoted, but he's like obsessed with Deidre Miro. Yeah, he's obsessed with that character, and like you know is is it's it's, it's kind of hard to tell at this point like what's his motivation in terms of like is it literally just like you're trying to impress her or mm-hmm. you're trying to impress the empire to elevate yourself it was it's, it, it that was kind of bizarre yeah but like the stuff with his mom and all that stuff was was very like i get it like you're just this very dejected i don't see i don't i don't, I don't have meaning right and and kind of searching for that but those i, I did feel like those were a little i i view out. that as like setting up something larger in the future. Like he's to me very clearly going to become a, a more important character. Oh, for sure. And I, I think that like they, it might be one of those, like we just can't, we can't put everything into this. Right. Uh, but like the backstory that you get for Andor and how, like who is his mom who ultimately dies in the series, she rescues him or, takes him depending on how you look at it from his home planet. Right. And like basically he's been on the run ever since. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of a little unclear as to like what she is, but there's some sort of like, I don't know, smuggler or I don't know. Well, it seemed very specific to their planet yes. where she was and like the community that they lived in and they were, you know, these hard workers that had something, you know, they, they were somehow connected to like rhythms yeah. and, and things like that. But it was that that idea that the empire was trying to infiltrate their society Absolutely. that they were completely against, and like created a movement to yep. stop it. And she was kind of like the head of that. Yeah, but again, like bringing Andor from his home planet to now this planet, right? And, and you know, obviously, he's. It, it looks like he's maybe what fifteen when she takes him from yeah. uh, his planet. But like the idea being that the empire was taking over Andor's home planet, kind of thing, right? So she realizes well, that there was an incident that all the parents who yeah. worked for the empire were more or less like kind of enslaved by the empire. Correct. Were all killed and all these kids were left like trying to survive. Kind of like Lord of the Flies situation. Yeah. Go, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and she recognized that like because he and or was associated with like this um like transport ship that went down, like they're going to kill him. And right. so she takes him back to Ferrix. Right. What I love about this, and this is my like main comment in relation to both Obi Wan and Boba Fett, is like the scenery in Andor is exactly what I expect. Right. Like when you think of a Star Wars anything, like you want large, sweeping, beautiful scenery, and like Obi Wan, yeah, you get that like really cool lightsaber battle towards the end. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, it's all like close quarters and like small sets. Sure. Same for Boba Fett for the most part. I mean, yeah, you get Tatooine again, but God, more Tatooine. Yeah. But here you get several different planets, places we've never been, places we've never seen. Right. We get these like beautiful, large, sweeping vistas, and we're clearly using that same Mandalorian piloted um, like screen technology. Oh, right, yeah. And it's very clear that they're using that. Right. But it's seamless. It's so beautiful. Right. And like, Y'all stop doing anything else. Like do this, right? Well, you know, and but that's like a, a different argument too. Of you, you've gotten at this point so many different renditions of Star Wars. 
Like, if you think of, like, the Clone Wars, that animated series, the things that they show you in that are very, like, the, 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 the planets and the landscapes that they show you are very much more sci-fi, okay. bizarre planets that right. have bizarre floral and fauna. Very true. That it's very, you know, it, it, it feels like that side of sci-fi whereas this is kind of going more into like a alternate earth locations mm. you know it's all it's all sandy or it's all frozen or it's all jungle you know and and i kind of like both right and i don't mind that in this series we got that because it fits more into that series like if he all of a sudden went to a planet where it's like they grow giant purple carrots that <laughs> that's the forest like it would just kind of feel a little strange for this story. Sure. But at the same time, like you, you can also do a story where it, it, it works in that setting and it still be star Wars. Like yeah. you still have the elements that connect those things all together. It, I guess what I'm saying is like, it just feels more to me like your settings became more of a character, like what we kind of expect or we want to see. Sure. You know, it's, it's not just your main, you and McGregor star as much right. as I love you and McGregor and, and him as Obi-Wan. It's not just that it's, these settings also become such an integral part here that we can't not put them on display. Right. And I, and I love that they've made that choice. Well, and I, and, and for me to the, the choice to make this clearly for adults, mm -hmm. but it, at the same time, it not being hyper action. No, it just being a very grounded. It's a little bit of a slow burn in, in some cases for sure. Yeah. I mean, and it was a decently lengthed series. Yep. It wasn't too short. Episodes were a good length. Yeah. Right around that 45 minute mark. I think the last one was like over an hour, but yeah. Yeah. They were all within definitely. that ballpark. Yeah. It just felt good. You know, it didn't feel like where in Obi Wan, you definitely got instances where it was like a little too mm. naive mm -hmm. and not like it didn't have enough depth mm -hmm. in areas, which I grant, like, I guess, like if you're working with those characters, you kind of have to make it more accessible to everybody. Yeah. But this was not. And that's good. You know, like it's it's good that, you know, Star Wars is big enough that it can be for everybody. Right. But everything doesn't have to be for everybody. So I, I kind of have a, a weird like I've been wrestling with something uh, about Andor and about like prequels and about like the, the narrative storyline. Mm -hmm. I think what also makes this so successful is that you have a very clear end. You know how Andor's story will end. Sure. As long as you've seen Rogue One. And we, we spoil enough already. You know that bomb's going to go off, and you know he's going to die on that beach. Right. Like, that's how he's going to die. Right. Everything is kind of just explanation to how do we get here. What I really like about this is that it's not open-ended. You know, like, Mandalorian is open-ended. We have no idea how that story's going to end. Right. You know, you think of Ray's story. It's still open-ended. We don't really know how that's going to end. We don't know how Obi-Wan's story is going to end. I mean, yes, if you if you want to read books and you want to like dive deep. Well, we know how Obi-Wan's story. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we know how Obi-Wan's story ends. I mean, I guess unless you want to say like, you know, he he lives eternally. And we don't yeah, know nah, the, well, maybe. Mm -hmm. the, the dinner parties that him and Anakin and Yoda are having up there in Jedi heaven. <laughs> maybe, is, that, maybe. is that how that works? I think so. Okay. Well, okay, maybe I think this, in terms of a prequel, works so much better than the prequels worked as prequels. Because, like, you're trying to explain a character that we know just a little bit about. And even through this entire story, this entire first 12 episodes, we really don't know a whole lot about him e even now. Sure. I think that's what's successful. Because when you think about, like, even Obi-Wan, I feel like we know a lot about that character. Maybe it's just because we've we spent so much time with him, you know, over the past... 50 years of Star Wars. For sure. You know, I mean, especially if you've watched Clone Wars. Exactly. And all that stuff. Like, you you know, people he's loved, people right. he's lost, like all this stuff. And like, you know, a lot of depth to that character. So as I'm kind of like talking and, and maybe processing, like maybe it's because we don't know a whole lot of Andor and who he is. Sure. And, it, but even though that we know where he's going and, but at the same time, certainly I've, I've seen instances where this didn't work as well, but they're, they're doing a good job at this point of not giving us a direct path to how did he end up there. So we don't know how he gets there. Right. It's when they either foreshadow too much. Yeah. So that you're you're already guessing, oh, then he's going to end up to that. And, oh, that's how he gets connected there. Because 
that that's when that becomes uninteresting. Correct. And I think there was a little bit too much of that in the prequels. Yes. Where we kind of, Very all right, we so. know that you're going to end up being Vader. So we're busy trying to figure out, oh, yeah, no, I already see it. He's already pissed off at Obi-Wan there. Right. You can see the anger building in him. It, it, that, that could have been drawn out probably right. a little bit better so that it, it perhaps it was more just like an, a, a really quick switch. And it wasn't yeah, but I think such that, a that would have been disappointing, up. too, because then know. people would have been like, well, that was fast. Like, he, he was best friends with Obi-Wan, and now he's not? Right. I, I just feel like in terms of this, maybe it's, uh, again, because we have one movie. Right. You know, we've got two hours with this character, and now you're explaining why we like... Because, like, I go back to, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a Star Wars fan who doesn't like Cassian Andor. Sure. I mean, again... Just as a character. Correct. There are people out there, but, yeah. you know, tattoos and stuff. So maybe it's because you, you spend three movies with Darth Vader that you're like, man... Now we're spending another three movies with Darth Vader, essentially, and now we're trying to connect all those dots. But here, there's just something different. Like the writing just doesn't feel so ham fisted that it's like exactly what you said. I'm I'm not spending so much time connecting dots. Yeah, and I'm not so I'm not spending time trying to guess. Yeah, how we're gonna get there. I'm just enjoying the ride. Exactly of how you get me to there. Exactly. Which I man, I enjoy that ride. Yeah, it is one of the few things that. I set my expectations so high mm-hmm. and it exceeded them. It met everyone and then it exceeded them and, and got me to a point of like, man, I am, I'm back. I'm back in love with this. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you keep, you know, give me, give me some of these. Yeah. I think I set it back. You know, we were talking about like what, what on that Boba Fett, Obi-Wan episode of like, mm-hmm. what are you looking forward to? And I remember saying like, I'm, I'm excited for Andor out of all the things that we were shown. I'm most interested in that. Just because I don't know what it is. Right. And I think that's what made it so great is like, I don't really know what you're going to try to do here. Right. But like that series, more so than anything else, like set a tone and a mood so well that when I push play and the 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 intro <sighs> came on. Which is a fantastic intro. It just puts you in such a specific mindset of what I'm about to spend the next 45 minutes doing that was so much fun. Yeah, to me, I think in in terms of the writing, all of the Star Wars movies realize they're a Star Wars movie. Right. The writing of this, and and Mandalorian included, it's we're telling these characters' stories, oh, and by the way, it happens to be in Star Wars. Right. They happen to be Star Wars characters. Right. Versus like, these are all Star Wars characters and we're telling a Star Wars story. Right. That makes sense? Totally. And I think that that's why Mandalorian is so successful. I think that's why this is so successful. And I would venture to say Obi-Wan and Boba Fett not as successful because of that writing. Well, and I think for those characters, for those those type of like, you know, series um, icons mm-hmm. that there's they're, they're such specific things that we, we have to have from it. Right. Whereas like, you know, like Obi-Wan's got to say... Hello there. Correct. And I'm not going to be happy until I get it. So I'm going to be sitting there watching in anticipation until he does it. Right. But like, I don't have It's going to be epic when it happens. Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. Unless it's not. (laughs) But I don't have that for Cassian. Correct. And I don't have that for all these other characters that now that you've introduced, I can just enjoy the ride. Exactly. And they crushed it. Yeah. It was a good one. I agree. Good ride. Hey, speaking of crushing things. Mm Mm-hmm. This uh, Uga doll. I wouldn't crush it. No, you want. I wouldn't, you I wouldn't go. Save, you want to. You want to savor this. Yeah, you want to savor it. But what I'm saying is, like, it crushes. Like, it is. It's fantastic. a. It's a great whiskey for sure. I have a request. Yep. And I, we tease this at the top of the episode. Yeah. Can we pair the Uga doll with the Core Reckon? You know we can. Okay. Wait, do we have enough Glen Cairns? Ah, oh, barely. <laughs> do we have enough Glen Cairns? Listen, you know what? It is a personal goal of mine to get a Glen Cairn representative on the podcast this year. And, and talk to us about the beauty that is the Glen Cairn glass. And we're going to try and make this happen. I love that. I, I knew you. I would. mean, we're, 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 we're big fans. Yeah. And we've, uh, we've got big fans that are big fans. Yeah. And we got a big fan going in the room because, you know, it's January in Florida and it's 95 degrees outside. 86 today. 86. In January. <sighs> Come on. Corey Reckon. I mean, I think we talked about good old Corey Reckon on the uh, year in review episode. Year in review? My rear end review. <laughs> Your in review. <laughs> getting it's getting better with that tattoo. <laughs> can you sit my down rear, now? My rear end review. It's getting better. You can sit down now. That's good. That bottle's like half gone. You can tell by the thum, thum. pretty damn close. Same color. I might Corey might be a touch, but 
Nah, I'm going to say exact same color. Right there. On the nose, the Ugadal has a, a much, to me, a, not I wouldn't say much, but a, a more prominent peaty nose. It's there on the Koi Reckon, but the difference is on the Koi Reckon, you've got proof. Yeah, it, the Koi Reckon does twinge my nose. What, what's the proof on the Koi Reckon? It jumps up to 57.1. All right, 114.2. Yeah. So a little higher. Higher enough that you, you can you can nose it. The Koi Reckon to me is giving off a more campfire smoke and a, a, a touch medicinal. Yeah, a little, little Band-Aid. little antiseptic. Yeah. No, we're sponsored by Band-Aid. We have to say Band-Aid. Oh, sure. Yeah. Drip and Stone, brought to you by the Band-Aid brand. I'm stuck on the Band-Aid brand. Because germs don't stick on me. I am stuck on Band-Aid brand. Because Band-Aid sticks Band-Aid on me. Band-Aid stick on me. Not germs. Close enough. I was going to say I'm going to give the nose to one or the other, but like, <laughs> I don't think I can. Yeah. Nose is, is more subtle. But I'm actually I'm, I'm, I'm pulling out a little, a little dark chocolate on Corey Reckon, too. Agreed. Like cocoa powder, where Oogie is still more <laughs> fruity, still more in, I'm still more in that blueberry cobbler. I'm gonna say that Oogdal is a little more friendly, like totally. I, I don't honestly, I don't think these are friendly scotches. Like these are scotches that someone like you, you've got to acclimate to. You've got to be ready for this ride. You do, but like I don't, I don't know nosing it. You could say is like, oh no, these are aggressive noses. Uh, I think they're, I think, especially Ugadal. I think yeah. it's a pretty. No, uh, okay, no, yes. Give me Ugadal, a candle of that what, all day. That's what I'm saying. I think Ugadal's friendlier. I don't think the Cora Reckon's a friendly nose either. As, like, we're acclimated to the the peat. I think if you were to give this to someone who, like, just walks in this room, they're uh, going to well, be like, oh. Fair oh, enough. Oh, yeah. No, my, oh. My, my wife can't nose <laughs> anything. If, it, if it's got 60 proof in it. Done. Well, that's, 60 all, that's proof. all she can do. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> that's all she can do. All right. You ready to sip this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Which well, wait, which one you do first? I'm going back to Oogie. Just okay. To, ooh, so good. Like, that 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 back end peat with the oaky bitter is freaking delightful. This might be one of my favorite bitters out of any scotch I've had. Mm. Wow, that is it, it's still like yeah, and it, and it never gets aggressive. It never never overtakes the experience. Right, you've still got everything else happening under it. Yeah, but it's just I, I would say that so the good. the bitter is heading towards aggression. Sure, but it's not aggressive. Doesn't doesn't get there, right? To the palate on the core, reckon the proof on it's not fair. Oh, well, it really isn't. That no. proof is hard to argue against because it's still there. You know what? I, I really appreciate having them back to back. Yeah, as you can see, the threads of this distillery for sure. I mean, you the, like they're they're cousins. Yeah. Ooh, I got a little little a wee scotch hug again. You're totally right. I feel like right off the bat, the Koi reckon has. A little bit more of a stronger honey punch. Not so much of the the fruity. You don't get the the sherry. Yeah, no sherry influence. So like that that fruity On the Koi Reckon? nature. Yeah, yeah. That fruity nature is just not there. It's just not there. No, so it's, it's more of a stronger honey forward, and then the back end has a more of an oaky presence, but it has that briny, almost salty quality too. That like yeah, just rides with you with that proof. It's very very sea air. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that's what I was saying. Like, it just, it's just going to depend on your mood any given night. Yeah. Which one you're going to prefer. Absolutely. If I were giving this to a, an Ardbeg novice, I would definitely give him the Ugadal over the Koi Reckon. Woo. I just went back to the Ugadal. Yeah. Now that's got a way more bitter, oaky nature on the yeah. back end of it. Yeah. Like, this is like, I think the proof in this is drawing out. All that oaky delightfulness. Mm-hmm. And it is almost getting aggressive. Woo. I could see why the Ugadal is favored over the Koi Reckon. Just because the nose is a little bit friendlier, that pea pop on the palate is is a little more pronounced, and that bitter just lingers for days. But the Koi Reckon, the, the proof is something to be contended with, and it is delightful. Right. And you, you still get all the same kind of notes, but I think because of the sherry on the Ugadal, it just it, it becomes a little friendlier. Yep. Like, that's not me putting one over the other. That's just me saying, like you said, different situations. Sure. I'm going to say this. If you're looking to add a higher proof peated scotch to your repertoire, you can't go wrong with either of these. No. Yeah, no, I think I think you know in in our experience at this point in time with as many scotches as we've done, especially recently, these are both like upper tier, hands down. 
It just gets your tongue all happy. Ooh. All kinds of happy. Who doesn't like a happy tongue? I mean, it's like, you know, just just takes your tongue and like ties a knot. Just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> No? <laughs> I mean, whatever makes you happy, uh, man. I didn't get that. <laughs> if that's what makes you happy. I'm, I'm for it. Like It takes it out of your mouth, like stretches it out like a cartoon, like ties a big old knot and throws it back in there. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, just great, 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 great pours. Well, you got anything else? Um, Nope. Good shit. All around. If you have not yet watched the full season of Andor, go do it right now. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna thank yourself. And, and honestly, us. I think it it was good episodically. Yeah, like watching it each week. But you didn't watch it that way, right? No, I watched like the first three episodes episodically, and then I stopped and then binged the rest. And then binged it. Yeah, I mean, we we watched it episodically, but I think this one actually might have benefited as a binge. It works either way. Yeah, but I think I think it um I think I could have perhaps drawn more out of it just like that that waiting week to week you kind of lose some of the the nuance yeah you know? that's a good point and i think there was a lot of that because it's so dialogue heavy too yeah dialogue no heavy and i think a lot of times like you can kind of forget characters perspectives in that in that weight yeah well we want to know what you think about the Ardbeg bag doll if you've had a chance to try that and what do you think about um uh, just art bag overall are you are you are you a scotchy Smoky Scotchy fan? Yeah. Because Ardbeg, Ardbeg's right up there for me. Me too. Have you had the, the Supernova? Because you spent, a, you know, $7 million. Yeah. Have you had any of those, like, really cool special the releases? Ardbeg. Ardbeg. Scorch. The there Ardcore. Was, they got a couple others, too. Yeah, there was, I was trying to think what that one was. There's like a like a Daft Punk kind of punk. But the, the Ardcore is, I think, they're is that punk it? rock. Oh, is that the yeah, punky yeah. one? We also want to know, have you watched Andor all the way through? And what are your thoughts on it? Yeah. Or are you currently watching Bad Batch Season 2 Ooh. and loving it? Yes. Yeah. I am. And how excited are you for Mandalorian Season 3? Yeah, it's right around the corner. Right around the corner. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be good. Yeah. And Pedro Pascal's having a day, man. He is. And like, good that, for that guy, him. I, I saw something the other day. Like, he's he's never had a series rank under, like, 94%. <laughs> On Rotten Tomatoes. The and dude's it's like, good. Dude's killing it, The man. dude's good. Like, what a record. Yeah. Well, you can touch us through email. That's drepinstone at gmail.com. You also can touch us through social media. It's always one word, drepinstone, D-R-E-P, and stone. Find us, like a thing, share a thing, send us a thing. Hey, it's a good time. Yeah, it is. And we'd love it if you support Drep and Stone. You can do that in a couple of ways. The first is through our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash Drep and Stone. We've got a pour with Drep or Stone, sometimes Drep and Stone. That's kind of like where we just focus on whiskey. Uh, we've also got uh, fresh cracks. We've got episode notes. And we're adding new stuff all the time to just kind of make that community better. Yeah, building it up yeah. one brick and whiskey at a time. Yeah, and, and actually, you know, all of you who are patrons, you can start to see the fruits of your patronage uh, in the better quality videos, in some lighting, and some some new stuff that we're adding, some new bottles. And uh, we can't wait to, to hang out with you in person and um, share those with you. Indeed. Yeah. Quality is arising. You can also support the podcast by rating Drep and Stone wherever it is you find great podcasts like this one. Kyle, what I'm talking about is all your podcasts like, you know, Apple Podcasts, your your Google streaming Podcasts. service, Google, Spotify, you know, all those kinds of things. Amazon Music. Thumbs, stars, any sort of rating helps out the podcast, and, and we, we would love you for it. Do the thing. Yeah, and you can also support the podcast by, like, just telling someone, hey, I, I noticed you're buying whiskey. Do you like whiskey? Or are you buying it for a friend? Oh, you like whiskey. Great. And friends. And wow. you're buying it for a friend. Even better. What a I've good person. A perfect podcast for you and your friend. Take just a couple seconds look us up you're going to be pleasantly surprised yeah this and you're going to make two, two new friends. friends raising a glass and having a conversation exactly and now you've got two more friends kyle and nick and who doesn't like more friends nobody everybody likes friends yeah yeah especially casper because he's a friendly ghost he's a friendly motherfucker <laughs> on that note <laughs> <laughs> hey buddy hey buddy may your glass overflow and your ass never show Unless you want it to. At a tattoo parlor. Cheers, buddy. Cheers.
So the small little um, 50 mil uh, fireball is not actually whiskey. No, nah, you don't. You don't have, y'all, y'all ain't got shit. Wesley. <laughs> I want some whiskey. He's like, nah, but Nick's in here. For those of you watching on the video, that's an editing cut because Wesley walked in here. Wesley's Kyle's Corgi. So everybody, everybody knows. I mean, everybody knows that at this point. He's nosy. Yeah. Ain't nothing like an art bag shower. <laughs> sounds like a personal problem, man. Oh, I mean, not like I'm not cleaning up my whip. My, never mind. <laughs> it's time for sipping. Phenolic overload. Mm. Been there. Mm. That was the name of my band. Phen- Phenolic overload. Phenolic overload. It was a very short career. That was me. Got frogs. It totally felt like it could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> Those ridges are so deep that they hold wow. the whiskey, and there's like lines. I was like, so "Oh shit!" Did you hand wash this, or did it yeah. go through the? No, I the hand washed it, it but I used like the rough side apparently, Ooh. and a little too like put a little too you much pressure there, on yeah. that one. Roid raged on it. What were we talking about? The Oogie Reckon, my guy. Like I can't wait to hear your giddiness. <laughs>